Well, why is it so important that you definitely be on the ballot this year as opposed to next year, <laughs> given the fact that there won't be another redistricting for until 2021? I, th I think that the, the, the 12 ballot is a perfect ballot because it is in people's consciousness right now. It, uh, we, we just went through the process, um, and, and they're gonna, they, they remember now what, what a problem it was. I think that's been a problem with redistricting, is that it happens so infrequently, and by the time we're ready to do it again, the memories of how badly it went the last time have faded. The fact that it's a presidential election this year isn't playing a role in this decision? Any, any year we have a, a big turnout, we have more voters who are, who are casting their vote for or against any proposition, so I think that's good. I think more voters will weigh in. The legislature right now has a redistricting task force and a constitutional modernization commission uh, in effect that both of them have said they're going to look at this issue. Uh, why, don't, why not wait and see what they can come up with? <laughs> As I indicated earlier, I've been testifying in front of the legislature since 2006. And, and I've, I've, the, the league has testified primarily in support of, of, of both of those, both of the major bills that have come through the legislature. Um, they've not gotten it over the hill yet, and so I'm not going to. I'm, I'm, we're tired of waiting for the legislature to actually um, make some changes. And they've, they've had a number of opportunities. Probably their best opportunity was um, what. A, Two, almost two years ago when, when both the Letson Bill and the Houston Bill uh, were under consideration, uh, they, they couldn't make it happen. So I, I think that because they haven't been able to make it happen, we need to do it. How far are you so far on your signature efforts? I don't know exactly, so I can't answer that. I think, I think there may be somebody available. I think Ian is available at the end to address that. Can someone in plain, in plain English in like 30 seconds or less tell us what this amendment actually does? 30 seconds or less? Yeah, just... I, I think it, it, the, the primary thing is that it, it puts voters, citizens in charge with the independent commission rather than the politicians. And it also gives those citizens some good public policy guidelines on things that they should be looking at in order to make their decision um, that, that are going to be favorable to the voters, not to the politicians. Can you ever truly take politics out of the process, though? I mean, some have argued over there that, you know, with the way we do it, at least you know where people stand, whereas if you put together this redistricting independent citizens commission, you're going to have people with unknown motives serving on it. You don't know what they're doing, what they're going to come right. up with. Yeah, I'm not sure we want Canada to be in charge of our redistricting, and I'm not sure even that would exactly work. Um, I, I, you're never going to take politics out of it. I absolutely agree with that. But the, the degree to which we have politics in it right now, I think, is unprecedented. And we know our system does not work as it is. We know, I don't think anybody's going to come up with a perfect system. I think this, is, this one is going to be a lot better. Um, you talk about motivations. Um, I, I, I think that citizens, I think that's what we've seen over, over the year, over this year, on those states that ha have citizens' commissions, that they have, they have operated as good government citizens and, and a little less as politicians. Not, not, not perfect, but, but less. And, and uh, unfortunately, I think we know what the motivations are of, of the politicians who are in charge of it right now. And so, um, I, I'm, I'm going with the citizens as opposed to kind of the known political motives that we have right now. How do you know that um, the citizens who get on this commission are actually somewhat impartial as opposed to just the proxies of the politicians? Well, I, I, don't think, I don't think you do know exactly, and that's why we've said we want some balance between Democrats and Republicans, but we also want people who are of neither of those parties. And so I think that gives us some balance. And people who are the, the really uh, hardcore politi politicians are excluded from the process. So I, I'm not sure that we can, we can find the, the perfect commission, but I think this, this one is as, as, as good as our uh, very politicized system is going to produce. And I, I would just add, as Ann mentioned earlier, there are the public policy um, guidelines, the, the good government guidelines to uh, guide this Independent Citizens Commission, and that's the means to hold them accountable. Thank you, Mayor. 
How many other states uh, use a citizen panel? Oh, I should know this. I'm sorry, I don't. California. California, California Arizona, Florida. Florida. Um, I think there, there's there's a number of them, and they're 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 they all have they're all structured differently. And you know, I think I think redistricting really is different from state to state. I think it has to be different from state to state. Uh, uh, Ohio is a very politicized state, so what is going to work in some states, it's not necessarily going to work here. So, you know, we've tried to, to, to fashion a solution that's going to work for Ohio. Um, and I have yet to see anything that's perfect. I mean, we, we testified um, about both, in, in support of both Letson's and Houston's bills, but with, you know, with, with, with some tweaking. But it, it's not, there's nothing, there's no perfect system, or I think we all would have found it by now. This is an extremely complicated, convoluted kind of issue, and every time it's come up where the public has had a chance to weigh in on it, Reform Ohio now, example, um, the public really has not understood it. Or we've seen a lot of confusion in the polls and what people say. So how are you going to break this down so that people know what the heck it means to them? I think it means, it means the foxes are not no longer in charge of the hen house. It means that people's vote will be counted. And I, you can look at the, the organizations who are supporting this, and, and it's a lot of your, your traditional good government organizations. And I think people have some confidence that, that uh, they'll, they'll leave the details to uh, the League of Women Voters, uh, Common Cause, the Ohio Council of Churches, uh, to, to look at the details and make sure that, that what's there is really going to meet those goals. And I think it will. And what does uh, We Are Ohio bring to this fight at, at this point? And do, do you think that uh, you would have made it for this year's ballot without their help? <laughs> was there a point where a decision was made, we've got to go for it for this election? Um, I'm going to leave some of that to Ian. Uh, we, they bring a lot of energy. We, we have a lot of energy before. I think we have more energy now. Energy is always good. Do you think that this will tap into the same energy that Senate Bill 5 did? One would hope. I mean, there was a lot of energy surrounding that. Um, sure, I hope so. And, and, and correct yep. me, <laughs> did you take a position on Senate Bill 5? The League did not. The League did not. But, uh, you know, I, I think that the nature of political coalitions is you look at who is, who is um, trying to work for your same goal on this issue, and you absolutely work with them. I think it would be folly not to do that. And, and I would just say we did not take a position on, on Senate Bill 5 because we could not take a position. We did not have a public policy stance that right. would allow us to take a position.